Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and um, um, uh, <laughs> I'm here to review a book. It is a book that I read, unfortunately. I think it was written by a person, but I can't confirm because I really believe it was written by AI. And that book is this. My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. Now you're like, that's like, why did you read this? Why did you read something you don't like? That's tequila. This was a gift. And this is no shade to the person who sent it to me, because they sent it to me in addition to another book. Or two can't remember and to their credit and in my defense there are two other Tessa Bailey books I've read that I really enjoyed well it was it happened one summer I actually really loved that one and then the second one hook line and sinker I really enjoyed that one so it was like hey maybe I'll like this also by Tessa Bailey now if y'all remember this one what had some controversy controversy about the cover yes I am intoxicated but that's gonna make this better for you. There was some controversy about the cover. I'm gonna insert the original cover here because this is a different one. Remember those masks? There always seems to be some masks with Miss Tessa girl. Now, no, I don't know her, no shade to her directly. Cause like, again, I don't know her. I don't know her, but this, no ma'am, no ma'am, <laughs> no ma'am, <laughs> no ma'am. Any hoozy doozy, I posted a poll on my Patreon in February for me to read some of the romance books that I was gifted and this won the poll and I think they voted because they knew I would suffer and so if you're my patron then you got to see my in time real time reactions to reading this I posted like three little mini vlogs as I was reading it if you want to see those join my patreon but I'm here to just give you my review of this group of papers it's called my killer vacation now i may be not smart because i didn't realize there was like murder mystery romance but it is so our main character goes on a vacation with her brother to cape cod and there's a murder so i didn't realize that i just thought it was a romance but obviously my killer vacation hello um before I get into spoilers, because I have tabs and I'm going to be spoiling this, but for some reason, if you don't want to know because you want to read it, I'll give you a little non-spoilery rundown quickly. So we have our main character. I don't remember anyone's name, so I'm gonna look at the back. What's her name? Okay, his name is Miles, the hero. The hero. Oh my God. And her name is, what is it? Charlotte, Megan. Taylor her name's Taylor okay we have Taylor and she's like a first grade teacher and she's so sweet and she never takes risks and she just like lives her life very by the book and she really cares about her younger brother and her younger brother I don't know his name and he's recently gone through something so sad so she's like let's go on a vacation I saved up all this money we're gonna go together we're gonna go to Cape Cod together Taylor and her little brother right so there's a murder right because they basically get something akin to an Airbnb and they're in there, they're like, mm, look around. Mm, that's a weird smell, but everything's beautiful. Still smells weird. Go into the laundry room, I think. Dead body between the washer and dryer. Whoa, okay. But of course, straight edge, straight lace. Elementary school teacher Taylor is like, you know what? I'm always straight edge. I always play by the rules. I wanna live on the edge. I wanna help solve this murder. And of course comes Miles. And Taylor's like young, early 20s, sweet teacher girl. And Miles is like in his 30s and he's hard. He's been affected by life and he used to be on the Boston police force. But now he's an independent, whatever the fuck, what is he called? A bounty hunter. And he's coming in as a favor to try to solve the murder. And so Taylor and Miles, is his name Miles? Did I say that? Yeah. And Miles, of course, are gonna fall in love because it's fucking romance books. So that's not a spoiler. There is as non spoilery as you get. Other non spoilery things. It's terrible. 
It's terribly written. There's no chemistry. This is the worst, yeah, the worst sex smut I've ever read in my life. Okay? Terrible. Everything bad. Those are my non spoiler rethoughts. So if you don't want any spoilers, I would leave, I would exit, I would pause, I would come back, I would stop, I would save to watch later. I would still like the video. Okay? But it's gonna be spoilers from here on out, babes. Let me hydrate, because we got some stuff to talk about. Jesus Christ. I need to, I told Ray I would set a timer because it's, I, it's very easy that I could just run. I could just talk about this fucking book. I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes and we better not go over it, Jessica. 20 minutes, okay. Can I just say, not sponsored. It's my new favorite lip chap. I don't know if you can see it. It's by Experiment, who makes my favorite serum. I forgot what the serum's called. But anyway, this is their new lip chap. And it's amazing. But it pisses me off because this is a size. And it's like $16. But it's so good. Fuck. Not sponsored with Experiment. If you want to sponsor me for that or your... I forgot what it's called. Who we'll called me? Email me. DM me. Right? Okay. Back to this. My killer. Like, it killed me. It killed my soul. It killed my spirit. It killed my will to live. Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. Okay, so my biggest problem with this, of course, is obviously a romance is going to have a happy ever after. We know they're going to end up together. But what I need for a romance and author to do is to sell me that these two characters actually have chemistry. No, you didn't. You just proved that he's a hornball and she's this little innocent thing who's curious about a bad boy. That's all. That's all. You did not give me chemistry between these two. So I did not even tab every terrible fucking instance of nonsense or terrible smut in this thing. But the tabs I do have, I would like to go through. You may get a dramatic reading. But let's just, let's just go through this, okay? So again, to set up there in Cape Cod, her and her brother, because something sad happened. They find a body in the Airbnb, of course, call the host, police, whatever, the person. It's the, it's the actual owner of the Airbnb who was murdered. So, whatever. They go stay in another one, another one of their properties, but she's so curious and she sees this bad, this, this bad boy who rolls up in his motorcycle. Of course, he's a fucking motorcycle to investigate. And she's like, I just want to help. I want to, I want I want to help. I want to do things. I want to do something different. And I'm like, <sighs> okay. Every, I, did I say this earlier? I think AI wrote this. Like, I don't think a human mind, and again, I don't know Tessa, but from reading It Happened One Summer and Hook, Line, and Sinker to reading this, no, 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 no. AI wrote this. Chat GPT authored a romance novel. Prove me wrong. Okay, let's, Let's start. Let's put my first tap say. <sighs> okay. The way, so I don't remember the exact ages. I know she's supposed to be like in her early 20s and he's supposed to be in like maybe his mid 30s because he kind of alludes to like her being this young innocent thing. Ew. And he just always, when we're in his head and seeing her, it's just always very almost childlike like he's imagining and describing her and I find that disgusting and just like I read smut okay I want it to be known I love me a fucking good ass sex scene or multiple in a book in a fanfic I'll eat that shit up okay but sometimes it's like why did you write it like this why did you use those words okay anyway so the first time Miles sees Taylor he's like didn't she just run into a door? That had to hurt. Plus, there are water splatters all over her legs, and she is, facts are facts, she's cute as a button. Cute as a button? I'm so sorry. A man that I'm going to be attracted to have sex with that don't want to think of me as cute as a button. I'm a grown woman. It's fucking weird, okay? It's, it's weird. Um, later, I think we're still in Miles' POV. I should be in the murder house taking pictures, checking for blood spatter and missed evidence. I should not be suddenly desperate to know this woman's name, but hell, if I could stop following in her wake when her ass moves like an ass ought to move. 
damn. And I say ought and damn like that because they're italicized. What the f let's let's not let's not pretend Taylor has a dump truck, okay? Like an ass ought to move. I'm just I want her to be so fucking for real. I'm so sick of it. What else? Are we still in miles? Here we go. I'm mostly wondering who the hell told her she wasn't brave. That would be a satisfying person to kill. You aren't backing down from my scary ass, are you? I cough into a fist, glancing off down the block. Seemed pretty brave to me. Another problem with this book is there's so much tell. It's like telling you, she's this innocent little girl. Her name is Taylor. She teaches young students. His name is Miles and he's got tattoos and long hair. He rides a motorcycle. It's just so much telling on page. And literally saying out loud, I'm a bad boy. You shouldn't mess with me. Like, girl, let's not be literal, okay? In the words, I can imply, okay? <laughs> I can make inferences, right? Then we're in TLR's POV. <sighs> He's not inspecting me very closely. So I use the opportunity to return that scrutiny. Based on appearances alone, this man might have just walked out of a criminal underworld. If the permanent scout on his face didn't scream villain, then the long unkempt hair and poorly scrawled tattoos do the trick, as do the scars on his knuckles and the side of his neck. Again, you are just telling us. I don't understand why these just couldn't be natural descriptors and you didn't have to literally say from the female's or the woman's POV, if his face didn't scream villain. Why do you have to tell us that? Okay, okay, I'm sick of it, I'm sick of it. We continue. Also, can I just, can we back up? Can I just say, remember when I said her brother was sad about something? I thought it was a breakup. I thought it was a breakup her brother was sad about. And they were coming on vacation. Do you know what it was? You know what her brother was sad about? He's like a zoologist. And I think a panda died at the zoo. Not like that's not sad, but what? Anyway, let's continue. Whose POV were you in this same? Are we in Taylor's POV or are we on Miles? Sorry, I can't keep them straight. You know what I'm saying? Because we do get alternate POVs. I think we're in Taylor's. So she goes, I guess I wouldn't mind the suit and socks and finance section type of man. No, that would be fine with me. As long as he doesn't treat me like porcelain in bed. Lord, it is incredibly satisfying to witness a smirk fade from his face. Take that muscle, muscle head. That's where the pickiness comes in. It seems I can't have both. On one hand, I like a man who makes a good living and wants a family someday. On the other, I like to be manhandled once in a while, just sort of thrown down and told who's boss, you know? Is that so much to ask? Also, Taylor has a fascination. She's like, I don't want to be treated as this nice, wonderful wife material. I want you to, I want you to beat me up. I want you to rough me up. And of course, Miles is there to do just that. Now, all mind you, we are still early in the novel. We were only on page 51, day one of Taylor and Miles meeting. And this happens. Let me read it to you. <laughs> Apparently, I'm the only one making a mental pro con list because the bounty hunter reaches out and grips the waistband of my shorts, the heat of his touch searing my hips, and he drags me forward fast enough to make me stumble a little. His hot breath curls in my belly button, and I reach for his hair, tangling it around my fingers, exhilaration pouring through me like a mile high waterfall. And then he licks me. He licks across my exposed belly from one hip to the other, then bites down on my abductor. Hard enough to make me gasp. I'm Miles. He says hoarsely, that's my name. Miles? I whisper, my knees seconds from giving up.
That's how you learn each other's name? That's how you that's how you learn each other's names first day? He licks your he licks your stomach. But please know that disturbed me. Okay? And I ain't got, I ain't seen nothing wrong with a one night stand or sleeping with somebody the first night you meet him. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm saying the first time I learn your name is after you lick my fucking stomach. That's fucking weird. No. No, it's crazy. Okay, we continue. Okay, we're in Taylor's POV, right? She says, I'm thrumming, anxious, begging me to open my thighs. Or it's thrumming. The anxious, begging me to open my thighs. She's talking about her body. Around his hips and lift, tease. Do whatever I have to do to make him touch me. Make him use his strength on me now, please. Please, what? He hooks a finger in my top and tugs it lower. That final inch that reveals my pointed nipples. A groan rumbling deep in his barrel truss. Suck these beautiful ass tits, god damn. I knew they have those little triangle tan lines on them. Fuck. This is not sexy. This is not sexy. Why does he have to talk like that? I hate it so much. That's just how he is. He just, she just like, that's why I'm like, this was written by AI. There's no way a human thought this is what some, I'm like, have you had sex? Is the man talking to you like this? Because you need to kick him out. <laughs> he needs to go. He's, he's dangerous. <laughs> he's not well, honey. Nor, this is terrible. I, Oh, oh, Jesus. But I had an instant awareness of him that I've never experienced with a man. Like there is a tiny but powerful magnet in my tummy and Miles is holding the counterpart. You pick up on my big sex kitten energy, Miles, don't you? Yes. God, yes, Taylor. You know I do. But I can't. I won't expect anything else from you. Because of course he's like, I'm a bad boy. And you're this sweet little thing and you're gonna go back to your life i'm gonna go back to my life we can't be a thing and so she's like yeah of course of course <sighs> miles says would anyone call you cute now because he says jesus look at you my free hand twists in the back panel of her underwear twist twist until she cries out because the material is so tight over her Still being held in that bent over position, she studies her reflection through glazed eyes. No, she hiccups. No, no, me either. I lean back slightly, tugging her twisted panties one side, groaning at what I reveal. Well, let me clarify. I can see your tight hole and nothing could stop that from being cute but the rest of you i press my lap to the top curve of her ass letting her feel the painful effect she's having on my cock now you're a girl who likes to fuck dirty what what who published it's better being so it's better been self-published because what do you mean? Oh my god, it's so bad. It's so bad. And it just keeps going. Just ridiculous shit like that. I'm like, you're supposed to be mid-30s. You sound you sound like you just learned what sex is. And it it's uncomfortable. Like Everything again is so telly and not, it does not show you. Her brother saying, oh my God. Jude falls back in his chair, face wreathed in amusement. The sexual tension between you two has escalated. I didn't think that was possible. Like I should be able to pick that up from the way they're interacting, not it having to be said on page by another character. And that's my, one of my biggest problems with this book. So again, she's an elementary school teacher. And so he's asking like, what, so funny and she says well 
I was thinking if you were one of my students and asked you to draw me a picture of your feelings and they would probably look like the cover of a death metal album. Again, saying how hardcore he is, how bad boy he is, is so fucking terrible. Oh my god. I'm trying to get through this. I only have four minutes. I don't want to read all of these to you because it's so terrible, but I only have a few more tabs and so you're going to listen, okay? Miles said, I've got a rubber in my wallet. I rasp when we break away, sucking out lungfuls of air. We're using it, sweetheart. Am I using it to give you a pounding? When was this published? Who is saying to give you a pounding? 2022. She says, you're gonna be so big inside me, aren't you? Big and mean, she whispers against my mouth. There's also, I don't know if I was reading it wrong, but there just seems a lot to be a lot of sex, a uh, lot of like random sex things in public, like at the beach when there's other people around and she goes into the sex store to buy a vibrator and then they're like on the street and he's like shoving the vibrator up her skirt. I'm like, y'all are just on the fucking street. Like this is indecent exposure at the very least. Like, what are you doing? Why are you always doing this in public places? It's just like, oh my God. Literally on the street, street after she comes out from this store and he just, I work her skirt up her waist, leaving it loosely bunched there. Like you can't just be doing that on the fucking sidewalk. I, okay. One of my last tabs is Miles again saying there's something else. She's tapping into my basis wants and it's everything I can do to keep from peeking. Just pump and blast off. You're the right size for me too, Taylor. A little too snug, but not enough to make me feel guilty about pounding it. I would like, I would like to have words, Tessa. Genuinely one of the worst books I've ever read in my entire life and that's coming from someone who had to read Great Expectations in eighth grade and cried to their mother because they didn't want to finish it and she forced me to finish it. I have not loved every romance book I've ever read. Of course not. But this was spectacularly terrible. I felt nothing but awkwardness and it forced down my throat to believe that these characters were interested in one another. It felt weird that he always was looking at her in this like young innocent kind of way. Ew. And her in this like obsessing over I'm this straight laced good girl he's a bad boy which is obviously not new but it's just that it was so blatant on page and we had to be con constantly reminded he has tattoos he has long hair ooh bad boy and the sex it's so disrespectful because there is such good fucking smut out there I mean poetic and then you give me I'm gonna give you a pounding I I threw that book when I finished my vlog I threw it again because that book pissed me off trees died for that ink was wasted for that art was created for that so I just want to say if you if you uh oh, my 20 minutes over. If you are questioning your writing, if you don't believe in yourself, if you are like, is this good? Publish it. Publish it. Publish it. I promise you, I promise you, it's not as bad as that. It's not. I read this in February it is April whatever day it is I'm still mad about it I'm still mad about it because what and the murder mystery part was stupid too <laughs> towards the end I was scared
skimming because I was like, my lord, I need to be free. And when it came out who it was, I was like, okay. Like, it was truly cover to cover garbage. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't like to tell people what to read, but I would highly recommend you don't read that. If you want to read a Tessa Bailey, my two recommendations would be a Hop on One Summer and a Hook, Line and Sinker. Obviously, do what you want to do. You know, have, explore if you want, but I do not recommend that. Tessa, 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 Tessa. God, what happened? What happened, girl? What happened, girl? That's a wrap for me. My timer went off, so I'm gonna be quiet. Um, hope you've enjoyed this review. I'm gonna finish this, but I need to make some chicken nuggets or something because I am buzzed. Like, I don't drink that often, so hmm, these two my words have hit me. Okay, so Robin, I hope you're happy. I hope this is satisfactory, satisfactory to you. This light is fucking bright. I got the go. Um, yeah, if you want to watch that vlog, you can join my Patreon. There's also a lot of other stuff. I post way more on Patreon than I do here on YouTube. I do lots of like productivity sprints, reading sprints, mah, 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 stuff there that's linked down in my bio. If you want to support my channel, all those links down there. Um, I felt like I was gonna see something else. The world's a terrible place. So yeah, I don't have anything else to follow that up except the world's a terrible place. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up. Share. You know, why hold back this joy from your friends? Share it out there. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.